Good morning on this very sunny Wednesday. I'm presuming it's sunny all across East Sussex and hopefully you get to make the most of it today in your break times throughout the day before the rain kind of descends upon us. So my name is Henny, otherwise known as Henrietta, and I'm going to be your host today for the ICANN 2021 Virtual Careers event. We are supported by the East Sussex Careers Hub, the Careers and Enterprise Company and East Sussex County Council ISEND. So this is a very special moment for us because we did used to run this event face to face, shock horror, like a lot of other activities. And I know that this year has been quite difficult in terms of grasping what it's like to learn virtually, online um, and moving everything to this platform. But what we've tried to do for you this morning, we're going to be together for 90 minutes. We've tried to really make this as interactive as possible. Now, this is a really special event because it's an inclusive event, which means that we're thinking about lots of different young people, lots of different pathways and how we can support you to be the best versions of yourselves, but also succeed as you start to think about what am I going to do when I turn 16? What am I going to do when I leave secondary school? Am I going to go into college? Am I going to go into employment? What skills do I need? What advice and support can help me get there? So that's what we're going to do today. This event has been designed to support you in thinking about your next steps to help you stay motivated as we get ready for the summer break. Now, a few things about Microsoft Live. Now, hopefully you've got me on a big screen. You've got your speakers on. You might want to add captions. So captions are subtitles that you'll see at the bottom of the screen. If you want to add those, there is a small box on the bottom right hand corner with CC in those. So would a student or a teacher like to add captions now if you want? Fantastic. Now, the captions don't always get it right, but hopefully you'll be able to follow on with those subtitles at the bottom if that's more helpful for you. So I mentioned that this is an interactive, inclusive careers event. What do I mean by interactive? Well, you should all have a careers box like this. If you don't, could the teachers please hand these out now to each student? So you've got a careers box. Don't open it just yet. We're going to have a look at it in a moment. But also we have a Q&A chat function. So what is the Q&A chat function? Again, you'll be able to see this on the right hand side of your screen. And the Q&A function is the way that you can communicate with us as a team, but also as our guests today. And we've got some really fantastic presenters that we're going to meet later on. We have Liam from Amaze. We have Louise from Youth Employability Service. We have Sai from DV8. Chris from MPCT. Sue and Cleo from Bexhill College. Danielle from East Sussex College Group. Matt from Millwood Servicing and Daisy from WizKids and Hope from Sussex University. So I'm going to be your host, but we've also got all of those fantastic people behind the scenes answering your questions live in the Q&A. Now, some classrooms you might want to ask your teacher to ask these questions, typing those questions up or you might want to select a particular student to go through each of those questions and type them to our particular providers. So have a think about what you'd like to do and we're going to have a look at the agenda for the next 90 minutes. So in a moment we're going to start to look at East Sussex, the big picture. We're going to think about what are our options in terms of employment? Where is the goal? Where are we moving on to? So that's where we're going to look at LMI and I'll break down what that acronym means in a moment. Then we're going to do a session together, me and you in your classrooms, and you're going to have to use your learning and visual skills for a video that I'm going to show you. We're then going to think about 
post-16 provision. So what are the options to you when you leave secondary school? And it's going to be what I call a showcase. So a showcase of all of the options. And after that, we're going to have a live Q&A with people's faces. So as well as chatting in the Q&A on the side, you'll be able to see the people behind the screen and talk to them from your classroom to our virtual platform today. Then we're going to do a bit of a bridge, a break, um, an energizer, I like to say, followed by a really fantastic guy that supports the Careers Hub, a friend of the Careers Hub called Action Jackson, talking to you, kind of helping you raise your motivation. Then we're going to move on to what's next after today's event and the challenge that you can take on after today. And that's going to be it. And then you'll be able to get on with your Wednesday and get out and hopefully enjoy a little bit of sun before the rest of your classes. So hopefully you've all got your boxes now and I want to, you to open that up. The first thing that you're going to take out is your handbook and this is what it looks like here. So has everyone got that? Now, really, I'd like you to put the box to the side. We're not going to look at the box right now, so pop the box to the side. But if you can, you probably have a pen in there. So take out the pen if you don't have one already. Grab the pen. And you're going to put your name on the front of this book, please. So pop your name and your year group on the on the front there. So I'm going to do mine. So Henny, there's me. And a little further activity, I want you to number each of the pages because we're going to be looking and using this book throughout the sessions today. So. This is page one and this is page two. Now go for each page after page two, three, four. Write down the numbers on each page now, please. Okay, fantastic. Hopefully you've all added your page numbers to your booklets. Right, so we're going to start using our booklets and we're going to turn to page three. So this page, remember I spoke to you about LMI and what that means. So LMI means labour market information. So today we're thinking about our next steps and our ultimate goal. What job would we like to have in the future? What sector would we like to work in? And labour market information really helps with that. So don't worry if that doesn't make any sense right now, because what we're going to do is we're going to watch the video and explore and understand what LMI means. Oh, we've just had some news from a school that they need a little bit longer on writing those page numbers. So let me give you a couple of seconds longer to answer to answer that activity that I gave you. Just finishing off the numbers in that booklet. I will also say that today's session is being recorded, but the Q&A that you've got at the side will not show in the recording. So please do feel free to ask questions, um, but we're not going to have that in the final recording of today. Okay. So when you watch the video now, I want you to think about the different jobs for each sector. And you're going to use this handbook to write down your answers. So you just need to think of one right now for each sector. And you might want to do this in pairs or on your table or as a classroom. So quickly decide now how you'd like to do that on your own, in pairs or as a class. 
Great. So we're going to think of a job for each sector whilst we're watching the video now, which is highlighting LMI in East Sussex. Right, let's head to the video. Oh, I can't hear the sound on my lovely video. Let's play that again, please. That gives you a head start, everyone. So get to thinking using page two before we start the video. Can you already, you already think, about think about some jobs in each of those categories? categories? All right, All let's right. start from the beginning of that video, please. That's perfect. I can hear it. Hopefully you can there all hear it. There are so it. many exciting businesses in East Sussex that you have never heard of before. You can find out more about these sectors using LMI, labour market information. You are using LMI in school every time you talk about how much someone in the arts makes yearly or when you learn that the number one job posting in East Sussex is for chefs. Let's learn more about LMI in some of the most important sectors in East Sussex. One of those sectors is construction and engineering. 25,000 people worked in this sector in East Sussex in 2019. And there are many jobs in construction and engineering, ranging from a building surveyor, aerospace engineer, carpenter, bricklayer, and many more. And all of those jobs can be found with our amazing local employers. One of those is Rampion Offshore Wind Farm. And did you know that they create enough green electricity to power half of Sussex? Our next sector is health and social care. In 2019, 33,000 people worked in this sector in East Sussex. And those jobs included an occupational therapist, mental health worker, and many more. Those jobs could be found at some of our local employers. Did you know that the NHS is the world's biggest employer and health and social care is matched with retail with the most amounts of jobs in East Sussex? So there are lots of opportunities in this sector and the pathways to get there are varied from apprenticeships to local college courses to degrees. In health and social care, you have the opportunity to make a direct difference to people's lives through their health and happiness. Now let's have a look at our land-based sector. There were 7,000 jobs listed for this sector in East Sussex in 2019. There are lots of different jobs in our land-based sector. Some of those could be being a forest operative, an agricultural engineer, a gamekeeper and a farmhand. Some of our big East Sussex employers include the National Trust, Sussex Wildlife Trust, RSPCA, and many more. The Sussex Wildlife Trust manages 30 nature reserves across Sussex, and you can even volunteer now as a wildlife ranger. To get into this sector, there are many local courses in agriculture, animal management, and many more. It's about finding the right course for you. Check out our local land-based college, Plumpton College, who are the local leaders in land-based study. The land-based sector is vitally important to the protection of our natural environment, global prosperity and well-being. Now let's take a look at our visitor economy sector. What are the types of jobs that you find in the visitor economy sector? Well, those could be being a travel agent, a tour guide, a chef, and many more. In East Sussex, we have lots of popular museums and many famous hotels. The pathways are varied in visitor economy and educational qualifications are not always needed. You could study travel and tourism, cooking, and take shorter courses on customer service. You can also study degrees in art and heritage to work in the cultural heritage sector or take an apprenticeship in a kitchen and work your way up to head chef. By working in visitor economy, you can connect to your community and share all of the most important sites with visitors. The creative and digital sector. East Sussex is part of England's creative coast 
a dynamic ecosystem stretching from Brighton to Margate, showcasing some of the best arts and culture in the world. The pathways into this sector can start with you at home with online courses on coding and creative pathways, which can be built upon by studying IT, painting, sculpting, web and game design and acting. Creativity in the digital age is of the utmost importance. By entering the creative and digital sector, you can work with the most up-to-date technology. You can push forward sectors such as VR and artificial intelligence. And creativity is named one of the most important skills by employers. You're in the perfect place. The Southeast accounts for 18% of all creative and digital jobs. We hope you learned something about LMI, labour market information in East Sussex and the various routes into your future career. What more can you learn? Head to Careers East Sussex to find more videos and more information about these key sectors. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, certainly, uh, certainly, I didn't know I didn't about, know about all, of those all of those jobs, jobs um, that, that, were that were available here in, here in Sussex. Sussex. So hopefully, so hopefully you started you to started think, to about, think some about some different jobs, different jobs and the sectors, sectors that you could be moving into. into. And this is, and this is so all key terminology, terminology key phrases, key phrases that, you'll that you'll be learning, learning and exploring, and exploring as, as about your, about next, your next step. step. So, so we'd really, we'd like, really like to see how, how you got on. So could you, so could you select, select your nominated, nominated person in the classroom to choose one of those sectors and a job you got and pop in the Q&A please. So I'd like, I'd to, like see to see some, some uh, uh, some of your some responses, of your responses coming through. through. So choose so a choose sector, sector that, that might be might creative, be digital, digital, digital and media, media, media and the and job. The job. So for, so for me, me, I got my game, got designer game designer out of that out one. Of that one. So use so the Q and A to let us let know, us know what, what examples, examples of jobs you got for each of those sectors. Of those sectors. Okay, so, okay, so there's a little bit of difficulty on the hearing. hearing. Harriet is, Harriet my, is amazing my amazing lady. Tech lady. Can you remove my you screen, remove Harriet, and Harriet, and put and see if that, that, that helps at all. So that gives so you, that gives you extra, extra time to answer the task. Carpenter, electrician, brilliant. Now, yes. what sector would a carpenter or electrician be in primary school? What sector would that be? Fantastic. I think the sound is much better now. Apologies for that. We are live. So these things happen and we don't have the budget that BBC do or, one of the, or any other amazing um, television programmes. So bear with us. You're all doing fantastic. Thank you, everybody. OK, hey. I will give you a couple of couple seconds, of seconds longer, longer to do that, to do that. And, introduce and introduce the next, the next section. section. So, so page, page two, two and three, and three was, all was all about, about the sectors, the, sectors and the jobs and the that are going to be our final, final goal, goal where, we're where we're aiming, to, where we're moving, moving to. to. 
And in order and to in order get to, to get those, to jobs, those jobs, jobs, we really, we need, really to need to think about the skills and qualities that we own or that we have and that we can develop. And we call some of those key skills employability skills. Now, you may be learning this already in school. You may be developing them as part of your careers program with your teachers. Or this might be the first time you, that you're thinking about it. But when you're going and applying for college or your next steps or a job, you want to be able to demonstrate the skills that you own and have because they're because really they're important, important to employers, employers but they're also, but they're really, also really important, important to, us to us as we develop, develop as young as young people and as adults. adults. And one, and of, one of those skills, skills is, called is aiming, aiming high. high. So the employability so skill aiming, aiming high, high if you if turn, you turn to, page, to page. Thirteen. So hopefully so this is where all your page numbers, numbers are really going to help. Gonna help. So page, so page 13. 13. Right, right, to save to you from, from hearing from my, hearing echo, my what echo, what I'd like you to do is use one person in your classroom. classroom. So, so put your hand, one, one person in your class classroom, classroom that's likely that's like, that would like, would like, like to read out, read out the questions. questions. So, teachers, so teachers in your classroom, in your classroom you nominate you one, one student, student, please. please. Okay, okay. And I'd like you to read out the questions to your class, those five questions to your class. Fantastic. So we're going to hear from some local employers talking about how they use Aiming High in the workplace. And whilst we're watching that, I want you to think how many sectors can you see represented in the video? So hopefully now you already know what sectors means. If you don't, then please ask the person sitting next to you. So sectors, we're thinking about health and social care, construction, engineering, those are all your key sectors. How many of those can you see in the video that we're going to watch now? And towards the end of the video, I want you to think if you could come up with a definition, what would that be? So we're going to watch this video twice. So the first time round, you might want to record it down on your in your notebook or on a whiteboard in the classroom. So page 13, please, page 13. I'll give you a second to make sure that you're definitely on that page. And I'm going to read out the questions for you in case you haven't been able to get there. The first question is, what would your definition of aiming high be? Now, this is just to think about, OK? But this second question is the one I want you to look at and think about when you're watching this video. How many sectors do you see represented in the video? Number three, why is aiming high important in different work settings? Number four, how is aiming high as a skill used in the workplace? And number five, when do you use your aiming high skills in school? Now, we also have lots of providers and employers on the call today, so they might also want to give this challenge a go also. So everyone's playing, everyone's doing this together. Hopefully you're there. How many sectors do we see? Harriet, let's play the video. Sound please, Harriet. Uh, it's important to aim high because nobody else does what I do here in this building. So that responsibility rests on me 
I have the knowledge and the expertise to do my job and I need to set my own goals and targets. If I'm feeling like I'm so sure or something's not quite working for me, then there's no one else to give me that push in that direction. So we aim high whether we're somebody in the office producing an internal report for somebody or whether we're dealing with a client or whether we're dealing with our operatives out on site, we always strive to be the best and that's one of our policies here to be the best at what we do. I think for us as well there's a lot of Premier League football clubs around, there's a lot of football clubs in the area as well so keeping the standards high, aiming high just keeps the brand reputation up so making sure that we are the best of what we do around this area. I think it's very important, myself and my husband, the fact that we've got whores over the door for our company. We pr take pride in our, our name, we take pride in, in making sure that we're quality driven. And then we have to write a lot of application forms and show that we meet the criteria and then we've got exciting and creative ideas. And so when you're writing that kind of thing down, you've got to aim high to try and meet those criteria. Every job is important and to get to the standard of doing a job the best you can is the ultimate really I suppose. Everything what I do on my job, any opportunity I got, I learn and I learn. Every training what comes in, I always say to my manager, I want to learn. Because at this point I've been in a position where everything was they offer me, I, I'm taking it, I never say no. Um, it's also important to have high standards or like high aspirations so that you can keep growing and keep um, getting to new levels within your career or within your studies. We've all got this natural um, instinct that we're here to help people. We've been in the service a long time and I've progressed up to paramedic and that's taken a lot of hard work. I ended up going back to university and to sort of push myself to do better, to do more for the patient. If you're starting maybe lower on the ladder, then as long as you've got that drive, you can get to the top of that ladder. I think that everybody needs to understand that there are rungs to each ladder, but you can go up each one and get to the top. I think it's important to always aim high in whatever you do, really. I mean, that's just about doing your best, isn't it? And if you're not going to do your best, What's the point? Why bother? If we, if we don't aim high, then I guess we don't get to keep doing what we're doing because we will be judged by our audience. It's so important that you're happy in your workplace and that you have good strategies to manage that. I'm always one for overly high um, aspirations. I went and did two degrees at the same time and working full time. So I would always say if somebody says you can't do something, I challenge that. So how did you all do? How many sectors did you see represented throughout the film? So whether you did this alone or as a group, please have a little discussion amongst yourselves and come up with your number. Come up with your main number and pop that in the Q&A so that we can see how you've done. Because we've got schools today joining us from all across East Sussex. So let's give it a go. Let's see how many sectors did you see? Pop it in the Q&A now. Hopefully you saw some employers that we learnt about in the LMI video, our local East Sussex employers. And if you think about it, those places of work could be your future workplaces. They could be the places that you eventually have a job OK, so let's get some answers in, please. How many sectors did you see represented throughout the film? How many did you see? Pop it in the Q&A. And if you weren't able to, to get them all, give it a guess. Pop in a guess of how many you think that we put in there. All right. So five, we've got seven, six, 
seven. Oh, very different numbers. All right. OK, Harriet, let's play the rest of the video. Now, the following questions, everybody. These are your handbooks to take home and to have in your classroom. So after today, this is like an introduction to all of these amazing things that you can continue to develop over the summer break. So after today, I want you to come back and have a look at these other questions. All right. So let's watch the rest of the video. And on the video, we're going to pop up the numbers for the answers to those. So let's play and see how well you did. Uh, it's important to aim high because nobody else does what I do here in this building. So that responsibility rests on me. I have the knowledge and the expertise to do my job and I need to set my own goals and targets. If I'm feeling like I'm not so sure or something's not quite working for me, then there's no one else to give me that push in that direction. So we aim high, whether we're somebody in the office producing an internal report for somebody, or whether we're dealing with a client, or whether we're dealing with our operatives out on site, we always strive to be the best. And that's one of our policies here, to be the best at what we do. I think for us as well, there's a lot of Premier League football clubs around, there's a lot of football clubs in the area as well. So keeping the standards high, aiming high, just keeps the brand reputation up. So making sure that we are the best of what we do around this area. I think it's very important, myself and my husband, the fact that we've got whores over the door for our company. We quite take pride in our, our name. We take pride in, in making sure that we're quality driven. And we have to write a lot of application forms and show that we meet the criteria and that we've got exciting and creative ideas. And so when you're writing that kind of thing down, you've got to aim high to try and meet those criteria. Every job is important. And to get to the standard of doing a job the best you can is the ultimate really, I suppose. OK, so we're now at six. How are you all doing, everyone? Yeah, I learn and I learn. Every training that comes in, I always say to my manager, I want to learn. Because at this point, I've been in a position where everything was they offer me, I, I'm taking it. I never say no. Um, it's also important to have high standards or like high aspirations so that you can keep growing and keep um, getting to new levels within your career or within your studies. We've all got this natural um, instinct that we're here to help people. I've been in the service a long time and I've progressed up to paramedic and that's taken a lot of hard work. I ended up going back to university and to sort of push myself to do better, to do more for the patient. If you're starting maybe lower on the ladder, then as long as you've got that drive, you can get to the top of that ladder. I think that everybody needs to understand that there are rungs to each ladder, but you can go up each one and get to the top. I think it's important to always aim high in whatever you do, really. I mean, that's just about doing your best, isn't it? And if you're not going to do your best, What's the point? Why bother? If we, if we don't aim high, then I guess we don't get to keep doing what we're doing because we will be judged by our audience. It's so important that you're happy in your workplace and that you have good strategies to manage that. I'm always one for overly high um, aspirations. I went and did two degrees at the same time and working full time. So I would always say if somebody says you can't do something, I challenge that. So there were actually 10. So there were some sneaky ones in there. And uh, carry on playing, please, Harriet. There were some sneaky ones in there. So um, hopefully you did OK or realised which ones you didn't get the first time round. And it just shows that even when we're watching something, we do miss things, right? Brilliant. Thanks for showing that video. Now, there are more videos. And if you want to further develop your skills and you think, oh, I want to learn a little bit more about how I can aim high or develop my listening or presenting skills, you can go on to the Skills Builder website or the Careers East Sussex website, which we've mentioned already, and you can further look at some of those employability skills. There are also some employers on the call today. So if you think, actually, I watched that video and I want to learn a little bit more about how the employers on the call today use certain skills, then 
add that as a Q&A today. Add that in the chat and maybe we can find out because we've got one more video and then we're going to go to a live Q&A. Then we're going to move away from my face and we're going to see lots of other faces on the screen, which is very exciting. If you think when we started the session today, about 40 minutes ago, let's have a little recap. We thought about the end goal. We thought about LMI, the jobs, the sectors, where we want to work. Maybe we're even thinking about the salary we want to have or the types of uh, activities that we would be doing in our job. Maybe we thought about that. Now we've thought about the skills and qualities that we need to develop. But one key thing that we're missing is what we need to do in order to get there in terms of education and training. And that is really key. What qualifications and training do you need to think about in order to get there? Do you need to do an apprenticeship? Can you move on to a different type of training? Have you thought about that net, or yet? I know that we've got lots of people from year 10 on the call today, but we've also got year nines, year 11s. And this is a really important part of your lives, thinking about that decision that you're going to make. And it's not always easy. But what's important is to think about the support that you're going to have and the curriculum. So what is that curriculum going to offer you? What is the content of that course? Are you going to enjoy it? And also the support. Is there support there to continue to help you achieve that goal? And in East Sussex, we've got lots of different, what I call post 16 destinations. So hopefully I'm introducing to you lots of new terms today, everyone. Destinations is something that I'm going to be using a lot over the next session. OK, let's use our handbook again. And this time we're going to go back a few pages. To page seven. This one, page seven, year 11 and beyond. You'll see there's a blue box there, and this is where I want you to jot down any questions that you've not been able to ask your teacher or nominated person to put in the live Q&A. Anything that you'd like to ask us today, jot down there. And to help you think about those questions, we're going to watch a showcase video of all of those different options available to us. And we do today have a representative, a one person from each of those post 16 destinations to answer any questions. OK, so let's watch that video and then we're going to go to our live event Q&A. There are so many providers of education and opportunity across East Sussex. With so much variety across plenty of exciting job sectors, there is something for everyone at all levels of qualifications and experience. Listen to some of the stories from providers such as DVH in Bexhill, Plumpton College and Parchment Trust, as well as the young people gaining experience the best possible way, on the job, with colleagues, as well as job coaches. We hope you can find some inspiration during the short film and we've added some links to the great resources at Careers East Sussex for you to find out more yourself. Let's hear from some of the providers about the types of courses and support available to you in East Sussex. You might want to study at DV8 either in Brighton or Bexhill. My name's Alice and I oversee admissions here at DV8 Sussex. DV8 Sussex is a creative college for those aged 16 and over and we have courses in music, media and games. You're also able to study your English and Maths functional skills or GCSEs with us as well. Hi, I'm Zoe, the Learning Support Coordinator here at DV8. I oversee and manage the Learning Support Team at our Brighton campus and I'll be a very familiar face during your journey at DV8 starting at the very start, which will be your application process. So once Alice has sent over an application form, we will have an initial meet. 
this is a chance for us to have a conversation, get to know each other a little bit, and for you to let us know about any learning support you may require whilst at DVA. During our transition period to DVA, don't be surprised if we have you making a short film, getting involved in an escape room, but all really, really fun stuff. If you are to study with us at DVA, we will support your learning throughout your time here and we will make sure you leave DVA feeling confident and empowered for your next adventure. Our local land-based college, Plumpton College, might be the place for you with a variety of courses, qualifications and lots of different support in place to help you be a success. There are many different reasons why students might become NEAT um, and it's really my job to work very closely with them and if, with their families if necessary to identify those barriers um, and work on managing those barriers. Whether you're interested in agriculture or animal care, horticulture, fisheries management or machinery or one of the other exciting courses available at Plumpton College, you'll be guaranteed lots of hands-on experience and the chance to develop an extensive range of skills. Maybe you're interested in East Sussex College Group. Let's hear from them. Now, did you know East Sussex College has campuses in Hastings, Eastbourne, and Lewis. Now all of our campuses have amazing facilities, amazing courses and even more amazing teachers. We've got award winning tutors, did you know that? We have got industry standard facilities, did you know that? And we have got some amazing buildings as well which you can come and join us whether that's for an A-level course, maybe a vocational course or some brand new T-level courses. Did you know we are one of the first in the UK to be asked by the government to do T-levels. Why not join us on this really, really exciting journey? Let's see some of the best bits of ESC. Let's go to Little Cave Farm and their supported employment programme. Hi, my name is Andrea and I'm the CEO of Little Gate Supported Employment. We're a charity that does supported employment for people who have learning difficulties and autism. We run a programme in supported apprenticeships. These are different because instead of working full time, the apprentice would work up to 16 hours a week with an employer. They would also have a job coach who would support them with their job. They could travel train them and support them with their relationship with their manager, for example. Another difference is usually you would go to college when you're doing an apprenticeship. But with Littlegate, you would have an independent training provider to deliver the English and maths and the other subject, for example, business administration. They would deliver it at the place of employment and you would get total wraparound support for you and the employer that you work with. It's a really successful way of doing an apprenticeship and a little bit different for those who've got an education and a healthcare plan. Another one of our brilliant colleges is Bexhill College. Hello, I'm Sue Rhodes and I'm the careers officer at Bexhill College. Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Penfold and I'm the study centre administrator. Hello everyone, I'm Claire Morgan and I support the study centre here at Bexhill College. Cleo and myself will be available today for this virtual ICANN event to take questions that you might have about careers and study support at Bexhill College. You're about to watch a video of the support that we offer at Bexhill College in our study centre. This year has been a challenging year with COVID-19 but we have supported many students online and face to face. We are hoping that in September we will be back to some kind of normality where we can support each and every one of you. Welcome to the study centre at Bexhill College. Over 500 students used the study centre last year. So what is the study centre? So the support that we give students is sometimes a one to one support. Sometimes it could be group work. It's mainly helping them with any work that they're really, really struggling with or maybe they've missed a deadline and um, so they come up to the study centre for extra support. Um, I do room 
Eurovision and I come here as like a common space to kind of have some fun and laugh and chillax kind of thing. Staff are very friendly to help you at work. I come up here a lot. Everyone's so like kind and helpful where you can just feel like you can really get things done. Uh, the teachers and like the support up here is really good and they like listen to what you have to say and help you with all your coursework and when you stress out they calm you down. You might also be thinking that a traineeship is for you because a traineeship is an opportunity to gain a qualification alongside work experience, which hopefully leads on to an apprenticeship or employment, with one day a week in class and three days a week in placement. Heathercroft Training offers such a programme. Or have you thought about studying with MPCT, Military Preparation College? Let's hear from them. From the first day a learner turns up here at the college to when they leave, is it's, it's a story in itself really. You know, you can turn up to college and already have the fitness, have, already have the, the qualifications, the education. It's been a, you know, fantastic. And there's some, some students and learners that turn up from, from they're wrapped in a shout. And it's, um, watch them open up like a flower and just progress. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's rewarding for us, definitely. When with the start of the college, uh, someone not very confident, uh, very shy, uh, can't work well within a team, and it's our job to to in, instil that within them. Uh, so when it comes to them leaving, uh, they they have all the life skills needed to, to succeed. Here at MPCT, it can take up to two years to complete your employability skills level two diploma, where we do have a roll on roll off basis if people are keen to join the military faster. The staff at MPCT are very encouraging and they help you achieve your goals, whether it is through civilian employment or through the military forces. I found MPCT through one of my favourite teachers. I was really worried about what I was going to do and he showed me on the right path. Every day we are challenged with PT to develop ourselves and better our fitness to become stronger and faster. The staff are great, I have abundance of respect for our staff and they're very much involved with every individual here at MPCT. I love seeing how far I can push myself, how far we can all work together as a team. You may be thinking, what am I going to do when I turn 16? But actually, you have lots of options to choose from. Those could range from studying, to moving into supported employment, volunteering, and much more. And you can find out more information on the Careers East Sussex website. And you can search for those courses or those opportunities by provider, sector, or the type of qualification you're interested in. When you're clicking on providers, you can find out about the course, the support available, and you can even apply for your chosen course using our e-prospectus on the Careers East Sussex website. You've had an introduction to the types of destinations available to you when you turn 16 here in East Sussex, and there is lots of support around to help you succeed on those destinations. What are those different types of destinations? Well, an apprenticeship is a real job with training and a salary. A-levels are an academic qualification similar in style to GCSEs that prepares you for further study. Technical vocational courses, or otherwise known as BTECs, are qualifications that teach you how to do tasks specifically related to the industry and role you want to be in. T-levels, are a technical study program similar to three A-levels with an industry placement to give you the skills that employers need. Traineeships, a work-focused study program that prepares you for an apprenticeship or for work. Entrepreneurship, setting up your own business as either a freelance service or a sole trader or a registered company. Paid employment, working 16 hours or more weekly with a contract in place. University, 
courses including different types of degree, foundation degrees, apprenticeships and many more. All of these destinations are available to you. Use the Careers East Sussex website to explore more courses, more qualifications and even apply for those courses using our e-prospectus. Fantastic. So there may be some new destinations that you've seen or heard about today. So remember that this event is just the beginning of thinking about what you're going to do next. So if you think, wow, there's too much to think about, it's OK. You have time and you have people around you. And some of those people are on the call. They're live with us to vent today. Oh, I'm muddling up my words. I'm so excited. So we're going to pose some questions that some of you as schools, thank you to those schools. You sent us some questions beforehand. You've even been asking questions in the live chat, but we're going to ask some people face to face and we're going to start with Liam from Amaze. Liam, we had a question for you from a school. I don't know what to study next. What can I do to find out? Well, morning everyone. I think this is the question that we've all asked at some point. It's really difficult to choose something. So I start off by thinking, what's my favourite subject? What am I really good at? And what are my interests? So if you're really interested in gaming, think about that. Is that something that you could go on to college to do? Talk to your families and friends. There's lots of expertise around you. People can tell you about their jobs and if there's anything there that you're interested in talk to school. Um, every school does careers advice, so make sure that you're using all of that information that you can get. Um, and what is your aspiration? Have you got a dream job? Don't worry about, oh, I haven't even done my GCSEs yet. What is your dream job? Think about that and is there some way that a college course would get you there? Um, the National Career Service has also got some good stuff online. They have something called Explore Careers, which tells you about different jobs so you can find out, see if there's anything of interest. And they also have a skills assessment which asks you questions and it helps make suggestions then of things that you might want to do. Um, but I think it's always good to make sure that you're asking lots of people to find out what you can do. Fantastic. Thank you, Liam. And I do know that there is loads of information on the Amaze website as well. And also something that Liam mentioned is the people around you. So your teachers in your classroom, but also friends and family and parents and carers at home. And actually, we've got another ICANN event tonight at six o'clock. So what I'd love for you to do is take your box home today after school and maybe watch this event again with your parents and carers. Help it all soak in. And you can ask different questions and there's slightly different videos tonight so it's not going to be exactly the same so come along and join us again tonight and we'll share the link after today fantastic now i've got two questions for louise from youth employability service so i'm going to do the first question for you louise which is how do i apply for an apprenticeship okay so um there are a couple of ways to apply for apprenticeships um, what I might do is I might share my screen. I hope that's possible on this call. Um, so there's a website, it's a government run website, and I'm just going to put it on the screen now where uh, employers who are looking for apprenticeships, or sorry, apprentices, uh, can um, advertise live opportunities. So I hope everyone can see my screen now. Um, so yeah, we can. Awesome. Brilliant. Great. So this is uh, that website. What you can do is you can click search. Um, it should load. My internet has timed it brilliantly to not let me do this. Um, OK, here it is. And you can put in whatever kind of industry you're interested in. So if I just click this one carpentry, for example, I put your location. So you can either put your postcode or uh, town. So um, I'm just going to put Eastbourne. Um, you can change the distance as well. So I'm just going to expand it a little bit. Doesn't mean that you'd be expected to travel that far, but it will just give us some more hits when I search today. And you can change the level as well. And 
when it loads, it should show you any uh, apprenticeships that are being advertised locally, and you can use this website to apply for them. Um, let's just wait for it to show us some results. Because there is something else you can do once it does that. OK, I don't think it's it's cooperating today, unfortunately, but what you can then do what, is Louise, it's too sunny. <laughs> yeah. And then what, what you can do once it's done a search is you can change the settings so, so it shows you one that's closest to you, for example, or um, different levels of apprenticeship because there are different levels of apprenticeship as well, much like there are different levels of college course. Um, uh, you can also click on an option called uh, set up job alerts. So what that will do is that you won't have to keep going back on the website. It will send you emails with any new jobs or any new apprenticeships that are added to that search. Um, the other way you could apply for an apprenticeship is if you've already got an employer. So it might be that you have a job uh, or you know somebody who said to you they could offer you a job. If you then wanted to turn that job into an apprenticeship, so that you're working towards a qualification, which might then give you open more doors within that industry. Um, oh, it's finally loaded. So you can see here, let's come up with some results. Um, but as I was going on to say, if you already have an employer that may be able to take you on and you would like to turn that into an apprenticeship, there is another website. Um, I think I've put both of these websites in the uh, Q&A chat. Um, where you can search for uh, a course so your employer can search for a course um, and a training provider that will help them provide the training part of the apprenticeship and that might be a college or it might be a um, a different training provider and i'll show you how to do that so it's this website we're on now if you click on find apprenticeship training um, it's a similar looking website and it seems to be working a bit better Again, you can search the kind of apprenticeship you're interested in. You might want to search the level. So I'm going to click level three. Um, and then we found level three, advanced carpentry and joinery. If I click on that, I can then search by my location, uh, which is Eastbourne, and it shows me any local uh, colleges or training providers that are offering that apprenticeship. So we can see we've got East Sussex College Group has come up there, for example, um, and you can look through and decide which one you'd like to provide your training as well. So that is the answer to that question. Fantastic, thank you. Also, if we remember from the showcase provider video, we also heard from um, Andrea at Littlegate Employment Services and they offer a supported apprenticeship program which if you have an EHCP an educational healthcare plan you could get some extra support on a supported apprenticeship but also it's really important to to note even if you don't have an EHCP and you have additional learning needs you can still go down a traditional apprenticeship route that Louise has just explored and there are learning support there is learning support sorry available to you Brilliant. There's one more question, Louise, and that was, what is a T level? Yeah, so a T level is um, a, a new qualification. Um, we did see a bit of information, or it was sort of mentioned uh, in the video by East Sussex College Group. So it's a new qualification that is equivalent to three A levels, but you just study one subject. So if you've sort of decided I what you really want to do as a career, um, and you're really sure about it, then a T level might be for you. Um, you know, and you can decide, right, I'm just going to study that subject and I'm going to get equivalent to three A levels in that. It includes a work placement as well. Um, so I think it's, it's 45 days work placement. Um, and again, there is a website which I've shared in the chat. Um, I think you can still see my screen actually. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I will just find that website as well and I'll show you that. So it's this website and it's got more information about T levels. So I hope that answers everybody's question about that. Brilliant. And we can also head to the Careers East Sussex website 
or East Sussex College Group who are offering T-levels. So now we're going to head to Matt. So Matt from Millwood Servicing, we have a question here. If I wanted to join the army, would I still need to go to college? Now you are an employer on the call today, so you might want to give a little bit of context about why I'm asking you this question. Yeah, so thank you very much. Um, yeah, I am an employer, um, but I've also been in the armed forces. So not in the army, uh, but the Royal Navy. Um, and when I joined the Royal Navy way back in the early 90s, when I was, where things were different, uh, and this wasn't this kind of support at all, um, we, uh, you were just assessed by by the uh, the careers office at, at the end of the day. So you turned up for what they called an interview, and uh, they had a load of questions and queries, concerns, and you just had to present yourself at that time. So actually, you, you had to really get across your, your character, why you wanted to join, uh, all the right reasons. Um, and so and that's all you had. And that was all that was the only opportunity you did. And then they assessed all of that and then you, you got in. But one, if you did get in through that stage, you were further assessed in your basic training. So they're not they don't expect you to have all the answers on day one. They'll give you that training through your basic and through your basic training in any of the armed forces um, as you as you progress and you develop. So uh, so for me back in the early 90s, I didn't have much to go with. Uh, I just had to give it a go and turn up and prove to them that I could be my best. And once I had that opportunity, and I think that's the key word, once I had the opportunity, I could then really demonstrate why I was going to be a good candidate and a, and a good um, service personnel. Fantastic, thank you, Matt. And uh, just one other question from me, actually. What advice would you give as an employer to a young person that may have or may need some additional support in helping them to succeed? What advice would you give them? Additional supports. So I, th I think it's I think it's about being not being afraid about asking for help. So um, as an employer, we don't know all the answers. We've been employing people for 30 years um, and we've got it right and wrong sometimes. But if we don't know, we, we just reach out. The, the, the most important thing is knowing when to ask for questions, when to ask for support. So the people are on this call and um, that uh, you know that I've met and some people I haven't met, they're already written down in my list in front of me for going back to those people after this call um, to ask them for support and advice uh, so that we can help more people. So actually it's about um, employers being confident to ask for help and also um, employees and future employees being confident to ask for help for support so that between the two of us employee and employer we can actually make it happen. Fantastic thank you Matt. Now we've got one other question not for you Matt but along the same kind of theme for Chris. So we've got Chris today from MPCT and we had a question come through. What are the courses at MPCT that I can study? Yeah, hi everyone, welcome. Um, great to be here. Um, yes, yeah, a great question. Um, on, on our course here, we, we do a BTEC level two in work skills. So uh, we're a military preparation college. We're sort of preparing learners to go into the military. So there's a lot of fitness, um, a lot of practical stuff. But alongside that, we also do a BTEC level two in work skills. Um, now that's a great qualification for us to do because with that qualification it's we do it in like a military theme so it's got a military theme to each unit um, and it's going to help you when you go into the military but also because it's a work skills BTEC level two all the stuff that we teach in there is going to help you progress into any other job roles as well um, so we have learners on the course that might not be going into the military might not be able to get into the military or decide they want to change then and want to go for a different career path so the BTEC level two work skills that we offer was going to help them with say like their interview skills, their, their teamwork skills um, and so on. So we offer that. Um, it's a roll and roll off course here. So the units that the learners do, um, they get the, the guided learning hours for. And then once they get to a certain amount of guided learning hours, they get their introductory award. The longer they're with us, they go on to the award the certificate. And then if they're with us for two years, which is as long as you can be on the course, they can get up to their, their diploma on that. Alongside that, we also offer functional skills for maths and English. So we have a dedicated skills and structure at the college will help the learners um, go up from their entry levels all the way up to their level twos um, if, they're, if they're on the course long enough, depending on where they start with that. Why that's important uh, for anyone that's looking to join the military, then you have to have your level twos for the military. If you join the military without your level twos, then they will do that with you. 
Um, however, in the military, they, uh, they they'd probably do that at weekends or at the end of the day when, when you're really tired from a day's training. Um, so it's, uh, it's beneficial to try and get them level twos um, before you join the military. Fantastic, thank you. What I'm getting today is there are so many different options depending on who you are. OK, we are all individuals and we all have different skills and qualities, but there are all different destinations available to us. And one of those is also university, which we call HE, higher education. So we've got Hope from Sussex University today. And um, the question is, I have dyslexia. Is there help for me at university? Yeah, definitely. Um, so hi, everyone. So basically, when you are thinking about university, um, you'll get to a point where you need to apply for student finance to help you pay for university. And at the same point, you can apply for something called the Disabled Students Allowance, or you might hear it um, called the DSA. And basically, this is to help you pay for any specialist equipment or software um, or any extra costs that you might need to help you with your studies at university. And so if you have dyslexia, this might look like a new laptop. Um, it could be a digital voice recorder to help you take notes or record your lectures. Um, it could pay for text to speech software to help you read text or mind mapping software. Um, and we also have people called disability advisors at university. Um, and basically they'll work with you on a one to one basis to make sure that you have all of the support that you need to be successful at university. Fantastic. Thank you, Hope. And we've got one last question from a school for Bexhill College with Sue and Cleo. I think you're both on the screen. The question for Sue and Cleo is, hi, is I am nervous about leaving school and starting college. What would your tips be? OK, well, hello, everyone. I'm Sue and this is my colleague uh, Cleo. Hello, everyone. And um, just wanted to say, actually, it is OK to be nervous. Um, that's to be expected. Um, you're moving on to a new stage of your learning. It's a little bit of the unknown. Um, so it's OK to be nervous. It's thinking about, though, what can I do to help allay my nerves? What, what action can I take that's going to make me feel a little bit more confident and a, a little less anxious about moving on? So one thing that we would say is that it's really important that you don't keep it to yourself. If you are nervous, you need to talk to your tutors at school. You need to talk to your careers advisor. You need to talk to if, if you if you're sort of working with the send coordinator, you need to talk to them as well and also your family, of course. But again, at college, there are people here like myself and Cleo um, that can help as well to allay those nerves. So as I say, it's OK to be nervous, but it's thinking about what is it that's making you nervous so you can identify what, the, what your key concerns or anxieties are so you can perhaps start to address them. And then it'll be you'll feel more in control of, of, of sort of the, the way forward. So. Um, some of our tips really um, are that you do need to talk about it, as I've already said, um, to p teachers at school. Um, when you come for your college interview, talk to the college interviewer about how you're feeling so that we're aware of, of, of how you're feeling and we can start to look at how we can help you move forward and formulate a plan. Um, the more familiar you are, the, the, the less anxious you're likely to be. So it's important that you research the courses um, and the provision. We've got an excellent website that you can look at and so have all the other colleges. We offer various sort of um, events as well that hopefully again will help young people, students like yourself that are moving on. And if I can give you some examples, and I know that other colleges do the same, uh, we at, at the moment this year, our year 10 taster day, which is normally an opportunity for you to come into the college and just see what it's like and, and try some of the subjects that interest you. It is because of the situation we're in with regard to COVID, it is going to be virtual this year, um, but that will give you a taste of, of, of courses that maybe might interest you. We have open evenings which um, will take place during the autumn term. That's an excellent opportunity for you to actually come in, see what the place is like, um, talk to um, 
tutors in the areas that you're interested in, the particular subjects that you're interested in to find out more about them, talk to students that are studying those subjects and also talk to um, my colleague Cleo and other sort of um, sort of people that are working within our study centre if you want to find out about the kind of support that we're able to offer. Um, in the summer term, if you're in year 11, when you go into year 11, we also have transition days. So that's another opportunity for you to come in and just get a little bit more of a feel for the place because then it does take away some of that anxiety. You, you, you know what it's like, you've had a little bit of feel, you know where the refectory is and, and what have you. Um, so we have transition days for our year 11s. And again, that's an opportunity for you to come in to meet uh, other students that are, that are coming to the college, you'll find out that they're nervous as well. It's not just you um, to meet tutors, to get more of a feel for the place. Um, and we post a lot of information on our Facebook page, our Instagram, our Twitter, so you can just keep an eye on, on what's going on there. Um, there's lots of information on our website. Um, I mean, these are just a few examples. I'm sure there are others. Um, and I'm going to pass you over to Claire to perhaps give an example of someone starting college that maybe is a little bit anxious, um, what we could perhaps do to help them. Hello everyone, so if you're probably feeling a bit anxious, like Sue has already mentioned, it's very normal, um, but I think sort of the main thing that you would want to do is contact us. Um, if we're not aware of your anxieties, then we can't alleviate those stresses. Um, so we have a study centre here, as an example and what we'd be able to do most importantly would be the transition date and um, so you'd come in and you'd meet people that you might be working with you'd meet staff and you'd meet any um, TAs that you'd be working with and our TAs um, in the study centre they're sort of general knowledge TAs so you'll have one-to-one -one sessions with them um, in a week we can set those up if you're feeling anxious about what if I don't know everything and what if I um, can't bring what I want to bring to the subject, we will have TAs for a one to one support session. And um, so it's just about letting us know of your anxieties. Fantastic. And I think that's the same for all the colleges, isn't it? So we've got lots on the call today. So contact the learning support team. I think that's the key message. And there has been lots of information that you've all been receiving today, maybe new destinations. But really, I think a key message there is to really understand yourself or get to know yourself with that support circle around you. And it may be a little bit overwhelming because you're still not sure about your next steps. And so I've asked actually a friend of the Careers Hub, Action Jackson, to come along. So turn to page five and six, please. Now, this is something that I'd like you to do at home tonight. Do it at home tonight, tomorrow night, and then show your teacher either on Friday or Monday. We're going to hear from Action Jackson about how we can stay motivated this summer and think about, and not think about, but just stay a little bit more positive about the way that we're going to move forward. So Action Jackson, let's give you a little listen. <laughs> What's going on? This is the I Can Career event. I am so happy to be tuning in live to you right now. Come on. Got my guitar here. My name is Action Jackson and I want to put a smile on your face. Smile right now. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Let's go, let's go, check it. I want you to sing along with me at some point, yeah? Are you ready? Let's go. Dream big, act now. Never give up, you're amazing. Dream big, act now. Never give up. You're amazing. Everybody sing. Dream big. Act now. Never give up. You're amazing. <laughs> What's going on? How are you doing? I just wanted to send this video to you just to help you dream bigger, to look further, to embrace that all that life has to offer for you. I want you to believe that I can. Yes, I can. I can. I 
can, hey, I can, what I can. <laughs> uh, in the short time that I have with you guys, what I want to do is I want to inspire you because you can have any career that you want. I don't want you to let anybody tell you that you can't. So let me share my slides with you so we can get started with this amazing, amazing presentation. So I just sang that song there, Dream Big, and I'm going to show you the lyrics in a moment. My name is Action Jackson. I'm the UK ambassador for happiness. You can message me on Instagram, on TikTok, and on YouTube, Action Jackson Live. So excited. Now, listen, I run this company called Happy Life Global. We teach people to learn. We teach people to laugh. We teach people to lead. We're all about unlocking potential and spreading happiness. Now, our mission is to create a world where you as young people are able to wake up happy and go to bed fulfilled. This is what I'm talking about. So dream big, act now, never give up, you're amazing. Should I play it again? Nod if you want me to play it again. Come on, nod. What's your problem? <laughs> Here we go. Let me play it again for you. But well, you got to sing along, though. Hey, 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 hey. Listen. Dream big. Act now. Never give up. You're amazing. Dream big, act down, never give up, you're amazing. Are you going to clap for me? Go on, clap, 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 I'm watching you, clap. <laughs> right, I'm so excited about today. It's going to be an amazing session together. Our time is very short. I'm going to go straight into it. I want to tell you a quick story about when I was growing up. When I was growing up, I want you to just imagine this. You're at school. You've got dreams to become an actor, but you don't think that you're good enough. I used to compare myself to a lot of people. I didn't think I was capable enough. I didn't think that I had the skills. I didn't think I had the capability. So what I did was I ran away from my dreams. I ran away from my goals. That's the biggest mistake anyone can ever make. If you've got dreams and goals on the inside of you, I want you to express it. Don't be scared of what people might think of you. Because if you allow people's fear to get in the way, it can mess you up. One of the things I did was to say to myself, I'm not good enough. I was bullied in year seven, bullied in year eight, bullied in year nine. Year 10, my friends used to laugh at me. I remembered one time I sang on stage. I sang on stage in year nine. And it was funny, after singing that song, one guy came to me and he's like, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, young ones, yeah, well done. That was brave. And that was the very thing I remembered, the fact that one person out of everybody told me that that was brave. And that was enough for me to build my confidence. Maybe sometimes you just need one person to tell you, well done. And this is why I want to encourage you today to never give up on your dreams, no matter what. So I want to teach you a couple of tips that's going to help you to build the future that you want. Very important. The future waits for you. But before I do that, I want you to understand this. Your thoughts will affect your emotions, your emotions will affect your actions, and your actions will affect your results. What do I mean? If you think you're rubbish, you're going to feel rubbish, you're going to do rubbish, you're going to get rubbish. If you think positive, you're going to feel positive, do positive, and get positive. That's it. I wanted to become an actor when I was growing up. I had it in my mind, but I told myself I'm not good enough. I didn't take any actions. I didn't get the results until I decided, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to dream big, act now, never give up because I'm amazing. I felt amazing. I did it. And today I own my own business. I've written two books. I travel around the world as a performer, educator, and an actor inspiring young people to dream big. Can you see how that worked out? So for you watching right now, I want you to understand that on the way to your dreams, you're going to be met with some defenders. There are things that are going to get in the way, and that's okay. The first thing I want you to understand is this. You're going to face fear. You're going to face laziness. You're going to face doubt. You're going to face frustration. You're going to face tiredness. You're going to face negative opinion. You're going to face anxiety. All these things will get in the way. If you're aware, 
you're not surprised. So I want you to think about it. Okay, I know these are going to come up. So whenever you experience this, it's all right. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand if you've ever experienced one of these. You see, I see you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Well done. Well done. Well done. So what do we do about it? I want you to create a vision board. Yes, a vision board is a board with your vision on it. Now, some people have gone ahead and written stuff down. Look at this as an example of a vision board of what someone wants to be. They want to travel. They want to have a family. They want to do great things. Someone else wants to be fit. Someone else wants to do amazing things with their lives. Someone wants to save money. Someone wants to buy a car. See, these are all visions. This young lady wants to be a gymnast. I love that. I love that. I love that. These are all the things that people want to be. Now, when I say dream big, act now, never give up, you're amazing. What I'm saying is, what's your dream? So your assignment today, right now as I'm speaking to you, is this. If you were to create a vision board for your life, what are you going to put on it? What are you going to put on that vision board? What job do you want? Where would you like to travel? How would you like to feel? So think, what job do I want? Where would I like to travel? How would I like to feel? And I want you to write it down. You're going to do this assignment. You're going to do this assignment. Okay, you're going to get a piece of paper, write it down or type it up or whatever. But I want you to document or create a vision board. A vision board is a board with your vision. And you've got to hold that vision to your heart. My vision is to make movies that makes people, people smile. You see, that's a vision. I'd like to travel to America, to, to, to Africa, to India, to Australia, to be able to show my movies. Do you see that? I've got it in my head. And I look at it every day and I work towards it every single day. So you need to understand that your vision is important and your vision is what's going to keep you alive and well. So I want to give you a summer challenge. See, we're going to be getting into the summer soon. And I don't just want you to sit there what being on TikTok all day, although TikTok is kind of cool, but you don't want to waste your time on TikTok. Number one, what I want you to do is to read something informative 30 minutes every day. Read about your dream every day. I want you to write 100 words every day about anything, anything, anything. Make sure you're writing. Number three, I want you to train your focus by listening to people, listening to positive things. Number four, exercise. Yep, every day for 30 minutes. Could be anything, but it will keep you healthy for the future. And I want you to learn something new, a dance, a language of some sort. Whatever you do, please don't give up. And also, what I've got on the screen right now, it's seven different things I want you to do. Keep a journal. Sing that song, which is a win statement. Find yourself a champion companion. Work out weekly. Create a playlist of songs that inspire you. Stop using your phone 20 minutes before bed and smile first thing in the morning. I love the fact that you've been focused during this presentation. For the teachers in the room, follow me on Happy Life Global. For the young people, Action Jackson Live on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, to come and get an inspiration to be the best version of yourself. So I'm going to finish off singing the song again. Are you ready? Hey, come on. Come on, everyone. In your classrooms, please, I'd like you to sing along with Action Jackson. Dream big, act now. Never give up, you're amazing. Dream big, act now, never give up, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this. Whatever you do, dream big and don't let anybody tell you that your dream is too big because you are truly amazing. Keep working hard, keep pushing. Remember, you're amazing. Now smile. There you go. Okay, I'm smiling. I'm smiling because I love listening to you, Action Jackson. Um, you've got this to take home. If you're like me, I actually, pr I've printed out those tasks. I put them on my wall because I'm really bad at the 20 minutes of phone thing before bed. And that's something that I'm working on. So this event doesn't stop here. Okay, everyone, we've got five minutes left of our allocated ICANN webinar session today, but it's not the end. And it's not the end because you have your handbook to look at with your teacher, but also with your parents and carers tonight. And you've got your careers box. Uh, we've got some 
Rock in here as well from Matt and Millwood Services. Servicing, I beg your pardon. Thank you for that. And we've got some other bits and bobs. But more importantly, we have an envelope. So just quickly grab this. I'd like your teachers in the classroom to spend some time with you looking at this later in the week because this is a challenge where you may be able to win some Amazon gift card vouchers. Um, who doesn't want to win Amazon gift vouchers? I definitely always do. There's always something to buy. So the I Can Sunflower Seed Challenge. I'm going to rush through this, but I want you to look at it later on with your teacher. So be careful because in this envelope are some seeds, some sunflower seeds. So you may want to open it very carefully. And if your card is inside or it might be in your box, there are two tasks. There are two challenges on this. So you're going to be growing those sunflower seeds and you might want to be doing a environmental task or a steam challenge. So one side is the environmental task. So you're going to choose yourself or as a class which challenge and which task you would like to do. So the environmental task is to use your sunflower seeds and an apple, some string and twigs to make your own bird feeder. Then you're going to take photos and you're going to use social media hashtag I can sunflower challenge to let us know how you're getting on. If you choose the steam challenge, this has been set to set for us by the amazing employer Factory Internet in Hastings. You're going to be growing your sunflower seeds and creating a digital log to track your growing process. OK, there's a QR code, so you shouldn't have your phones in class. So tonight you're going to use the QR code to find out more information with your teacher or with your parent and carer. OK, so we're all going to be doing the sunflower seed challenge together. Right. Dream big. You're amazing. This has been I can 2021. Thank you to everybody that's joined us live today. Thank you to all the schools. Thank you to you, everyone in the classrooms answering the questions, but also following on with the activities. You've been really fantastic. I've loved seeing the answers. It's been really great. So remember, what are you going to do after today? You're going to tell your parents and carers to join us tonight. You're going to finish the handbook. And you're going to choose a challenge, either an environmental challenge or the steam challenge. And then the last thing, an evaluation. OK, so page 18, an evaluation. You're going to give that to your teachers. So let me repeat that handbook, parents and carers tonight, sunflower steam card challenge and the evaluation. Thank you. I can, we can, you're amazing. Have a fantastic day at school and I hope to hear from you. See all of your fantastic photos of your challenge very, very soon. Thank you very much and this is the end of the ICANN Careers Event 2021. Goodbye everyone.